You've written extensively on Spinoza throughout your career. Do you recall when you first came across Spinoza and, and maybe what it was uh, about him that really connected with you? I, yeah, actually, I can remember exactly when. Um, so I had, you know, I written my uh, PhD dissertation on 17th century philosophy, concentrating on Descartes and uh, his philosophy. But eventually, I wanted to write something that would get read by more than a dozen other specialists in the field. And this is especially after I had children and um, I received tenure at the university. And so I felt I had a kind, both a kind of freedom to now work on whatever I wanted to work on. But also with children, I felt if I was going to squirrel myself away and write something and you know, take myself away from them, from playing with them or doing something with them, um, caring for them, it should be for something that really mattered. I wanted to continue to work in 17th century philosophy. Um, I also wanted to write something that would get read by a broad audience and not just fellow philosophers. Um, I also wanted to write on something that was a little closer to my own Jewish mm. heritage. And Spinoza seemed to fit all of those criteria. Um, there's the whole Jewish context of his life and education and his, his excommunication. Um, he's still a 17th century philosopher. But there's also something fascinatingly mysterious, difficult, and engaging about Spinoza, partly because he's uh, so difficult to understand. And I found, you know, once you start working on Spinoza, you try endlessly to figure it out. And every time I read him, it gets more difficult. But the other attraction of Spinoza is that he's a rebel, he's a radical, um, and one who was punished by the community that raised him. And everybody loves a radical hero especially somebody who suffers at the hands of the authorities. And then, as I said, once Spinoza gets his hooks into you, that's it. Um, it's easy to become obsessed with Spinoza. Uh, the other reason, I think, is also that Spinoza essentially gets it all right. Um, I found that he spoke to me in a personal way, that um, I not only understood what he was saying about God and nature and the human being and a good life and morality, but I thought he got it right. Um, his views on religion, on politics, um, on how to be a good person and how to achieve some kind of flourishing or happiness, um, it all makes a kind of sense. And Spinoza, I think it's possible to um, you know, be a modern day citizen and be a Spinozist to take him as your model for the way in which you think and act. Before we get too far into it, would you mind for someone maybe not familiar with Spinoza, what's a brief kind of overview? Um, so his two main works, one was called The Ethics and the other was The Theological Political Treatise. Uh, in The Ethics, it, it's a very difficult work. He wrote both of these in Latin. But essentially, at least as I read him, Spinoza is saying that um, there is no such thing as a transcendent providential God. That's a very superstitious religious belief. All there is, is nature. And everything that there is, is in and determined by nature. Uh, human beings are as much a part of nature as trees and giraffes. And everything in nature is governed by nature's inviolable deterministic laws. Everything happens with absolute necessity. Uh, there's no providence in nature. Uh, there's no God who does things for purposes. Everything follows from nature in a law-like and necessary way. And that applies as much to uh, events involving human beings. There is no such thing as an absolutely free will. Our thoughts, our desires, our choices, our volitions are all as much determined by causal factors as rocks rolling down hills or leaves falling off of trees. So in the ethics, he takes this picture of the human being in nature and shows how even so it's possible for us to be more or less free, not in the sense of having an absolutely free will, but to the extent that you are guided in your actions by reason, by what you know, not by what you feel or what you imagine or what you sense, but by what you know. And the free, rational and virtuous person is somebody who lives a life according to reason, 